Hey YouTube, Jobin here. So I asked the other day um, a bunch of things that I could do for my next video and by far the majority response said review the Harns Viper. And that's uh, this guy here. Uh, there was some other stuff that was pretty popular that, popular that I'll get to but this got about twice as many votes as anything else. Uh, now Harns is a Chinese knife brand. Um, in the same price range as like Enlan or San Renmu, that kind of thing. This is roughly a $15 knife ish. Prices will vary, probably will go up in the future because all prices do that. But right now you can get one for about $15, $16. Now, many of you may not have heard of Harns before. Uh, that's because there wasn't much to talk about with regard to them before. This is not their first knife. But it's sort of the first one that's worth uh, writing home about, so to speak. I have two of their previous ones, and I'm not even sure I made videos about them, because it wasn't that they were bad. It was more like you could throw a dart at the Enlon catalog and hit something as good or better. There just wasn't really any reason to actually own them. <clears throat> uh, but this one, I think they did right. So... Actually, I've uh, blabbed enough for a bit. Let's actually do a little comparison here. I think it's always good to throw in a few references. Um, so, like, uh, here's an Ontario Rat 1. So you get the idea here. It's a... Uh, it's a sort of standard-ish design. I mean, aesthetically, it has a bit of its own take on it, but in the sort of uh, large folder that's largely straight. There's uh, quite a few other things that are kind of like that. Here's an Enlonial 01, common knife to see on my channel. Uh, let's throw in a uh, Para 2. Just as another common reference knife. Uh, <clears throat> uh, above it in price category, of course, but a lot of people either have these or have handled these or have seen these, so yeah. Talk about that in a sec. So, uh, the Harns uh, Viper is a fairly large pocket knife. Oh, you know what? Just for good measure. <laughs> Why not? Here it is next to a large Sabenza 21. <laughs> These are in price categories so different, you can't even see one from the other. But, as you can see, overall proportions, sort of general blade angles and stuff, uh, pretty similar. <clears throat> Which uh, sort of brings me tangentially to a point that, as far as I know, uh, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, the Harns Viper is not a clone of another knife. Uh, we know the Chinese do that a lot, and I really like it when they don't. So, if that's true, bravo. I'm sure somebody will post, well, maybe somebody will come along and post in the comments below that it looks kind of like XYZ knife, but, you know, most knives look like other knives. As I've just shown by comparing it to one, two, three, four others, uh, this sort of general plan, this size, shape, proportions, really common. A lot of knives kind of like this. Uh, now, I said I'd talk about that. Um, mine, my first one, uh, did come with a little flaw. And that's that, for some reason, the lanyard hole was not drilled through all the way on one side. I don't know what's up with that. I don't really understand how that would have happened, especially since it has that break sort of like in the corner of where the hole's supposed to be. I'll be able to fix this in a minute or two with my drill, but I thought it was worth preserving until the review to mention. I will say though that I have a box over there uh, with 10 more of these knives in it, and none of the others is like that. None of them have any problems. So 
at least that I've seen so far, and I've, I've, you know, I've given them all a quick look. So that seems pretty good. Uh, the blade length on this, uh, just in case you didn't sort of get the general idea from the comparisons, is from the very end of the handle to the tip, about 3.6 inches. Uh, the handle size is quite good. I have, I'd say, probably average size hands for an adult man. And as you see, I have absolutely no problem getting all four fingers on here. There's room for a fifth, maybe a sixth, depending on how far you wanted to go up. There's lots of room. You can go back a bit, and it's pretty comfortable. Very, very comfortable like this. In some grips, it's maybe a little wide for my tastes up here, this general area. Uh, but that's very much a preference thing. It sort of depends on your hands, and it's sort of borderline for me. It's not really a complaint. In general, I like knives with long, simple grips like this. They tend to be much more secure than they look, just because you have a lot of room, a lot of space to grab, and they give you options for how you want to hold the thing. Unfortunately, the pocket clip is uh, right-hand side only and only tip down. That's kind of a bummer. <sighs> Lefties get left out a lot. I don't really like that, but it's sort of out of my hands. Was that like two puns in a row? I didn't really plan either one of those. Um, I am normally, or I should say, I was before really not a fan of thumb discs. But I think that might just be because the knives I've had them before didn't do them right. Because on this knife, it's very easy to use. And uh, this one is well broken in. Sometimes they're a little stiff out of the box, but as you see, that's opening very easily. I was trying to push as gently as I could there, and it still pops open almost all the way. See, there it went. This knife tends to open very, very well. While being, having a good detent. Eh, there we go. Takes a bit of shaking to get it to come open. So I'm very pleased with that. It's um, very easy to either flick open just the way the thumb disc is positioned and the way things are balanced, you just give a little push like that and it pops open and also you can do easily do a much more controlled thing sliding your thumb in like that. That's fine. And you could, if you're a fan of the middle finger flick, it also works on this knife quite well. So opening is actually really fun to do. I've played with this a lot. And in playing with it a lot, doing hundreds of opens and closes over several days. I did notice a bit of a tendency for the pivot to loosen. Um, I might end up loctiting mine uh, once I get it settled the way I want and decide whether or not I'm going to try opening this up and doing anything to it. Um, it is a, a two screw kind of pivot. You can't really tell because at first glance because one of the screws is under the pocket clip. Uh, what I mean by that is let me get an example. A lot of knife pivots are what I'm pretty sure is called a sex bolt. Where you have this big bolt thing and it's just got a head on one end and it's got a part that you insert a screw into. And you end up with flanges on both sides to hold things together. Uh, whereas uh, this one Follows, it's also fairly common in knives. It has a, uh, the pivot has a threaded hole that goes all the way through it and a screw goes in on each side. Um, those can be kind of nice because you can fiddle with them a fair bit. And um, you can often, uh, if there's a centering problem, uh, you can all, often fix it by tweaking the screws uh, to different degrees. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Uh, let's see. The handle is a uh, brown G10. I want to show you something kind of interesting. It's checkered. And in a lot of pictures of this knife, you might see it's very, very brown. And it still is, but you can probably see the white highlights in the checkering pattern. Uh, these sort of don't appear right away. Here, I'll grab one. Right out of the box, I think I'll be able to show you. 
And what I think is going on here is like oil from the factory. Because if you put oil on G10, it gets darker. So as it's handled and some of the factory oils come off, it got a little bit lighter and the checkering highlights just really sort of pop. Which I'm a fan of. I really like... Oh, too close. Can't focus. There we go. Yeah. I really like this pattern. It feels pleasant on the uh, fingers and it's quite grippy. I like it. I like it a lot. It's a pretty big piece of G10. While I have you... Oh wait, hold on. Yeah, see, there's the out of the box one. Not much gleam from the nooks and crannies. Very sort of matte. And you could probably darken it up again like this. Um, just like a drop or two of oil of basically any kind. Uh, wipe it on there if you feel like it. Uh, but this is what mine ended up looking like after carrying it for a few days and playing with it a lot. Uh, while I have it zoomed in like this, maybe I can show you. It has pretty substantial stainless steel liners. And they are skeletonized. I can't remember exactly what the knife weighs, but it's not anything crazy heavy or crazy light for a large folder with uh, steel and G10 handle. You know, I'll probably put it in the description below. Uh, the pocket clip is interesting. It's very long and very low. It doesn't stick out very far. And most of the time, this is a really good thing. In most grips, you'll barely notice this pocket clip is here, at least if you're a right-handed person. Might be a little more intrusive for a lefty. Uh, the one uh, exception to that I found so far is I was messing around with this and I decided to check like the tip strength and stuff. So I grabbed this in an ice pick grip and was poking the end into a board, basically. And I jammed it in a few times. I'm not recommending that as something to do with folding knives, by the way. But I did for like, you know, testing purposes. Anyway, um, I did that and I said, wait a minute, why is my index finger hurting? <laughs> and it's basically because that, in this one grip, in that one particular case, the end of the pocket clip is precisely placed to uh, jam it into your finger. Other than that, it really does a good job of staying out of the way. Uh, that's a big complaint I have with a lot of knives. Uh, probably of all the stuff I own, my ZT560 is the worst offender in that regard. I do not understand how that pocket clip made it past design. They put it at the point where, at like the max, at the best possible place for creating a hot spot. Whatever, I, I'm digressing. Oh no, he just criticized Zero Tolerance and Rick Hinderer. Stone him. CT560, it's a great knife. I just don't like the pocket clip. I, I actually, um, I think I actually switched it to uh, tip down because it's less in the way that way. Uh, tip up carry, that's a pain on that knife. <clears throat> anyway, I am really off topic at this point. Okay. It's a uh, standoff. Got really plain standoffs in there. Nothing wrong with that, really. A lot of knives do. Nothing fancy. And I think I am nearing the end of this review. Um, oh, no, I'm not. Not quite. Uh, Blade Steel. This is 9CR18 MOV. I'm not a steel expert. Uh, the sort of standard reference steel for a lot of the Chinese folders is 8CR13 MOV. Um, I'm not an expert in exactly how uh, steel alloying works, but this has a sort of higher carbon content and a f quite a bit higher chromium content. Uh, 9CR18 is basically 440B, uh, which is a decent steel, um, noteworthy primarily for being very corrosion resistant. 
As far as like the heat treat and stuff on uh, on it in this particular knife, I'm not sure. I haven't done the testing for that um, entirely. I've messed around with it a little in some very informal testing, uh, AKA trying to scratch one blade with another. Um, it seems to be harder than uh, most Ganzo knives, actually all Ganzo knives, it scratches them pretty easily. And it seems to be about hardened um, to about Shannon Moo's level, which is generally advertised as um, Rockwell 57 or 58. So it seems okay. I did a little chopping uh, with it into a um, laminated wooden board, which is kind of tough stuff. Um, there were not any immediate obvious problems with, uh, like, there was no edge chipping or anything. There might have been a little denting or rolling, which is not entirely unexpected. I mean, that's kind of a nasty thing to do uh, to a small pocket, to a pocket knife. And uh, <clears throat> any, you know, dulling resulting from that sharpened out quite easily. Overall, I'm really pleased with this. I think it's a great value for the money and it's nice to see another company um, entering this field and bringing something worthwhile to the table. I would highly recommend this knife, uh, especially if you're a fan of uh, the budget folders. It's, it's really nice. All right, guys, this is Jobin signing off saying, remember where your knife is.